Hello everyone, in this video I'm really excited to announce that there is a new version of the stylus material that I have been using for pretty much a few years now. Uh, so this is the 2.0 version, I've been working on it for a while now and I think I'm pretty happy with the results I got so far, so I think it's ready to be released. And uh, in this video I'm going to be pretty much showing you that, um, how it works. If you're interested in getting it, there's going to be a link in the video description. Uh, from now on, I'm pretty much going to be using this as my main material uh, because I'm just finding it to be pretty useful. And so, all right, let's go ahead and get started and let's check it out. So what I want to do here is I want to show you exactly how the stylized material works. All right, so obviously the first thing you have done is you have downloaded the material. And what you want to do is obviously drag the uh, material, which is the Substance Painter Smart Material SPSM file, and just drag it into your Substance Painter window, uh, more specifically down here. So drag that in, and make sure you set this to Smart Material, and either save it in your project or your library if you want to have access to it in the future. Now in this case, I already have imported this, so I'm not going to import this one more one more time. What you need to do is for this material to work is you need to make sure you have baked your maps first so that the maps are actually used by that material. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag the material on this model. If things look wrong, if something looks uh, completely off, what you can do is click on the main base layer here and at the bottom of this you'll see the input images and basically these are the maps that are essentially required by this material so that it works uh, as it is intended. So as you can see, if I, for example, get rid of position, you, know, you can see a difference here in the material, and also that um, here in the uh, input images, you see that it's now missing, and obviously uh, you need to have that in order for the material to work correctly. So now that we know that, let me just go through some of the uh, uh, material settings so that you know how this material actually functions. Alrighty, so basically the material comes with two layers, uh, the main color layer, and it also comes with a metallic layer, yeah, which I'm going to show you in a second here. So basically the ma main base, it's one layer, it has a few options. The first option is obviously uh, your main color, so you can change the main color uh, to these sliders here, you can change the color, uh, saturation and also uh, the brightness of the actual uh, color. Now the other option here is the edge color. So basically if I zoom in here you'll see that there is a, a color edge on the model and this is coming from the uh, curvature map on your bake so make sure that that's looking good. So depending on what your curvature looks like that's what's going to be used for the actual edge here. Now the first one is edge color and edge intensity, and uh, if you can see, as you can see here, if I you know, lower the intensity of this, you can see how much this actually is affecting the model, and you can change the color as well. Now the first option is the edge, and then there's a second one which is a soft edge. Now the first one is a really hard kind of edge uh, that's applied to the model but it's also not uh, fully uniform. So as you can see here, it's mostly stronger at the edge of the uh, of the model. And then in the middle, it's a little bit more non-uniform. So that's what the first one does. So let me just turn this one off for now so that we can see the other one. So the other edge is the soft edge. And this basically is the same thing, uh, but this is a little bit more uniform and it's also a lot softer. So. Let me change the uh, color here so we can see it a little bit better. So as you can see here, there's a little bit more feathering uh, between the edges. So this is just nice to have uh, that combination of two edge uh, amounts. And then there's also the intensity for that one. So you can turn this off or you can kind of increase it. If you go too high, it's essentially it's just kind of applying it as a whole color. Whereas you can see here, um, it's gonna also changes the softness of it. Okay, so let me go over this, Let's go back to that. Now the other uh, setting here is, after that, is top gradient. So this is essentially like a gradient on the top of the model. And you can, this, you can use this um, as a way to create kind of like weather, a weather effect, so that it's uh, the top of the model is a little bit brighter 
than the bottom. So if I hit C here so I can only see the base color, it's a little bit easier to see. So as you can see here, if I turn this off, it's uh, everything's uniformly um, colored. Uh, but if you increase this, you can see that it's a little bit more like a light on the top. So the top is a little bit lighter. And you can use this also for color variance. So you can change the color of this. So it's not necessarily being used uh, as a way to add a little bit of lighting to it. But you can also use it as a way to add a little bit of color variation. Now after that we have base dirt. So what that implies is obviously there's dirt at the bottom. And you can increase the uh, intensity of that. I think it's just a nice way to add just a little bit more of color uh, variation to the model so that it's not completely a completely flat color across the model and then we have bottom the bottom gradient so this acts uh, similar to the top gradient but this is mostly for the bottom of the model it's just nice to use it for grounding your model a little bit better and if you're going for a more stylized hand painted look it's also helpful for you know, giving it a little bit more of a lighting scheme to it and as and just like the top one you can also just use this as a way to add color variation as well so you can change the color of it now let's go down to uh, baked lighting so essentially this is going to be baking light uh, from the top down so this one's super helpful if you are going for that hand painted look so as you can see it gives it that uh, you know really stylized hand painted look uh, and usually you are, you uh, accomplish that by having some baked lighting. The next option here is curvature intensity. Now this is not the same as the edge uh, intensity from the top. This adds a little bit more. It adds both uh, curvature and also cavity. So as you can see here, this line here is going to get a little bit darker as I increase this. So it gets a little bit sharper. So this one I would use in combination with the baked lighting. I think it always, I think it does a good job at just kind of like making it so that the edges are a little bit more well connected. Now, but the one thing I will uh, caution against the curvature one is that this is derived from the normal map. So if uh, depending on your UVs and where your cuts are, uh, I would watch out when you increase this one uh, because there might be. Uh, more noticeable seams on your mesh based on this uh, but it really depends on the model that you're using in this case this model it's mostly a hard surface there's not that many uv cuts like in the middle so you won't really notice any uh, seams being caused by this one but that's just something to keep in mind when you're using this uh, specific uh, slider here and now the next one is ambient occlusion uh, by default it's on but if you don't want it on you can just disable it or if you're going for a hand painted look obviously have a little bit of that and finally we have the roughness Go back here so that we can see it now there is a little bit of roughness already by default uh, and if we look at the uh, actual roughness map you can see that it's not exactly um, it's not a uniform roughness there is a little bit of dirt on it so let's increase this so if we increase the roughness you can see it uh, that it becomes a little bit shinier but it still has a little bit of dirt on it just to give it a little bit of variation and then finally we have the metallic if you want to convert this into a metallic uh, material uh, but i do have an extra layer for that as well okay so that's pretty much it for the main color so let's check out the metallic so i can show you that so that one works really similar to the other one uh, except it's metallic of course and this one has uh, a few more layers uh, the reason for that is uh, it has a surface detail which is just a little bit like a hammered metal type uh, surface detail here which you can disable if you want and there's also a little bit of edge damage which you can also disable and then the main layer is it's pretty much the same as the color one except this one has um, a few more options at the bottom for uh, the amount of roughness um, so for example it has a few more 
sliders for the edge roughness for example so if I decrease the roughness on the edges if I want to it's a little hard to see here so let's look at the roughness there we go so by default uh, the edge roughness is a little bit high so the edge is a little bit shinier but if you want to reduce that and do the opposite and make the edges uh, be more uh, not shiny you can do that uh, and the same thing for the dirt you can increase or decrease the roughness of this so you can make the cavities uh, less rough if you want to and metallic I typically just leave it uh, by the default I find that uh, 0.85 works well for stylized metal obviously this is not realistic metal it's just like a stylized one and you can change also if you want the edge to be non-metallic or metallic uh, but that's the only difference between the metallic uh, layer and the um, and the other one which is not metallic all right so that's pretty much it for how this works uh, like i said this makes it really really simple uh, really it's a drag and drop and you are already you already get some pretty nice results pretty much almost all the way there obviously you're gonna have to add a few more details uh, manually but other than that i think this material is pretty good and it's a lot better than the previous one that i had made uh, obviously this is the 2.0 version uh, the previous one it was a good material i used it for a while but i was found it, i was finding that uh needed a few more things uh, which is why i made this one all right so anyway that's it for this video uh if anyone needs help or if the material is not working for some reason for you uh you can always reach out at support at 3dx.net if you have any questions or suggestions as well just let me know Alrighty, thank you for watching this video.